The most important distribution for a continuous random variable is the normal distribution, also known as the bell curve. This distribution has a probability density function, like the f of x you see on the screen. There's only two parameters inside of that function that can change the outcomes of the function, and that is mu, the mean, and sigma, the standard deviation. So these two parameters dictate the shape and the location of the curve. No matter what mu and sigma you have, though, there's two things that are always true about a normal distribution, and that's that we have perfect symmetry left and right. Perfect symmetry through the center of our curve. I have two curves on the screen, a blue curve and an orange curve. They're both normal distributions, but only the blue one is a standard normal distribution. The orange curve is just a normal distribution, not standard. Notice that both of those curves are perfectly symmetric left to right, so we could fold the curves right down the center and they would perfectly align the left side and the right side. Another property that all of these distributions have is that the total area under the curve is equal to one. Now we know that for a continuous random variable, we measure probabilities using area. So just like with a discrete random variable, where all of the probabilities in our function had to add to one. In a continuous random variable, our area that we're measuring under this curve also has to total to be one, to make 100% of the outcomes. So no matter if you have a shorter, wider curve or a taller, narrower curve, the total area has to be equal to one. For a normal distribution, we're going to use a notation similar to the one we use for a binomial distribution. Our random variable x is going to follow a normal curve, so we're going to do x squiggle capital N. Inside of the parentheses, we'll put the two parameters that we're saying are important for dictating the shape and location of the curve. That's the mu and the sigma. Let's talk more about how the two parameters, mu and sigma, determine the shape and location of the curve. In the pictures you see on the screen, the blue curve is the standard normal. It has a mu of zero, a standard deviation of one. If I were to say, increase the standard deviation to something larger than one, my curve would become shorter and wider. And that's because of the area under the curve halving to total to one. I can't add area, I can't subtract area, so we're kind of just reshaping the area. So with a larger standard deviation, our curve becomes short and wide. If I were to do the opposite, pick a smaller standard deviation, my curve would become taller and more narrow. The mean changes the curve in a different way. It doesn't change the shape of the curve at all. It just changes the location. If I were to have my data set centered at, say, negative two, my curve would appear shifted left compared to the standard normal. And if I were to have a data set with a mean at, say, positive one, my curve would appear shifted right when we compare it to the normal curve. So the standard deviation changes the shape of the curve. The mean changes the location of the curve. Because most data sets are not already standardized, we have to talk about the idea of a z-score. A z-score is the number of standard deviations a value x is above or below the mean mu. I have two curves on the screen, the blue curve, the standard normal distribution, mean of zero, sigma, standard deviation of one, and the orange curve, non-standard normal, a mean at five, and a sigma standard deviation of 0 0.7. Now the orange curve is representative of the actual data values. That's like our raw data set, and it's hard to compare two different data sets when you're looking at raw data. So a lot of times we need to convert it into a standardized normal, and we can do that with the two equations we see on the screen, but let me help you understand where those equations come from. If I were to count the z-score for both the blue curve and the orange curve, 
I'm basically starting at the center of my data set and traveling by groups of standard deviations. So if I traveled one standard deviation above the mean on the blue curve, I would land at one. So starting at zero, traveling to the right, one, I would land at one. On the orange curve, that's not the same thing. If I start at the mean, five, and I travel to the right, 0 0.7, which is one standard deviation, I would land at 5.7. That means that 5.7, my raw data value, is one standard deviation away from the mean. It has a z-score of one. So the one from the blue curve and the 5.7 from the orange curve, they're related because they're relatively the same distance from the mean. If I traveled another standard deviation away from the mean, I would land on two for the standard normal curve, representing two standard deviations. On the orange curve, that's of course not the same. If I started at the mean, five, and I traveled to the right, two standard deviations, I would land on 6.4. So the variable value, 6.4, has a z-score of two. It is two standard deviations above the mean. We can travel below the mean as well. If I were to travel one standard deviation to the left, on the standard normal curve, I would land at negative one. The negative is indicating that we are traveling left, values below the mean. For our non-standard normal on the orange curve, we don't land on negative one. If we started at five, our mean, and I traveled left, a standard deviation, I'm essentially subtracting 0 0.7 from five. That would put me at 4.3. So 4.3 is a variable value, and it has a z-score of negative one, because it's one standard deviation below the mean. If we were to travel two standard deviations below the mean, for the standard normal curve, I would be at negative two. The negative telling me I traveled left, the two telling me how many standard deviations I've traveled. For the orange curve, that's not the case. If I started at the center, five, and I traveled left, two standard deviations, I'm subtracting 0 0.7 from five twice. So five minus 0 0.7 minus another 0 0.7 would put me at 3.6. So these variable values, 3.6, 4.3, 5.7, 6.4, they're all associated to z-scores that we can find on the standard normal curve. We didn't quite talk about one more number, and that is the five, the center of my orange distribution. It's not traveling away from the mean because it is the mean. So the five has a z-score as well, and it's zero. Five is in the center of my curve, just like zero is in the center of the standard normal curve. So the five and the zero are related as well. The formulas you see on the screen are actually from the same equation. They've just been manipulated so that they do different things. If I know my z-score and I know the mean and standard deviation of my non-standard distribution, I can calculate a variable value. So if I wanted to know what variable value is two standard deviations away from the mean, I could plug in mu, two for z and sigma, and it would tell me that my variable value is 6.4. On the other hand, if I know my variable value and my mu and sigma from my non-standard normal distribution, I can calculate a z-score by plugging in x, mu, and sigma and solving for z. So we can communicate from non-standard to standard normal, translate back and forth, and this becomes very useful when we come to compare two separate data sets.